What's up, folks? This is Michael, and I'm going to get right to it. And one of the reasons I'm going to do that is because tonight I'm going to give you two, two trivia questions. I didn't get around to it last night. It was just that crazy, stupid, busy. Oh my gosh, what a day. But I had all the templates figured out and so forth. So, like I said, I'm going to give you two trivia questions. One for hump day and one heading into the brand new day. But first we'll get started with what should have been a happy hump day trivia question. And we'll get right to it. The answer to that previous trivia question was the Teapot Dome scandal. And that was mentioned in a couple of different trivia questions within the last six months to a year. Definitely, but it was mentioned previously, this week actually, but it was the Teapot Dome scandal, and this was essentially a bribery scandal. When all was said and done, your bottom line things, it was it was dealt with bribery that occurred under President Warren, Warden, Warren Hardin's time, easy for me to say, in office from 1921 to 1923. The Roaring Twenties is there known, but it was also very corrupt. Hardin's whole time in office was fraught with scandal and the teapot dome uh, scandal gets a majority of that spotlight for sure it involved a man named albert bacon fall center of attention here who was harding's secretary of the interior whose position placed him in the role of managing the conservation of most federal land along with natural resources at the time during the roaring 20s as it was known it was also put mr hall in a very vulnerable position for corruption and bribery and one of the reasons for this is because in early 20th century remember this this is the 20s right fuel oil was being obtained and converted to coal by the U.S. Navy. And I want to go back just a little bit. It was being obtained and converted to coal, and the whole oil in and of itself was just coming to be. It was just coming to be this huge, booming type of an industry. If you remember from previous trivia, trivia questions, by the by, oil fields were being discovered. Of course, in Texas, we all know you know the history of JRU and the UN family in Dallas and all that good stuff. So that was Texas. And then in the Pennsylvania mountains, remember that one when, when we went over the first pipeline in a previous trivia question that was ever built in the United States. So they were popping up all over the place and obtaining this oil and refining them and converting them to, to, to getting them to factories and converting them to coal for energy was a huge, huge business. Now, Fuel was being obtained and converted to coal by the U.S. Navy, and several oil-producing areas in the country at the time were designated as naval oil reserves, okay? So if the government, uh, you know, uh, saw some potential for some of this place, and, and they, they would designate them as, as oil reserves by the Navy. This was to ensure that the Navy would always have enough fuel available. And one of these areas in particular was called Teapot Dome oil field in Natrona County, Wyoming. It was out in Wyoming. And the, and the Teapot Dome name would, would, would go down in history, folks. Now, this Harding, President Harding, would transfer control over the Department of Interior, essentially giving control to Albert Fall. Again, this is the Teapot Dome oil field. Secretary Fall, Fall was very persuasive with this transfer. And this, there was a reason behind this, right? He was like, hey, President, I think you should... Uh, I think you should take control of this oil field without question. This was due to the fact that he could see how this kind of control would work in his favor. So the plan, the seed was set, in other words. Okay? In 1922, Fall would release the oil production rights at Teapot Dome to a company called Mammoth Oil, which was a subsidiary of Sinclair Oil Corporation. A couple of different things going on here. He essentially issued leases to these two oil companies right and he would go on to release other leases as well to other oil companies once he realized you know that that, that, that he was going to put this plan into action these leases were issued without competitive bidding and they went to the uh, they they ended up being very fav favorable to oil companies nothing wrong with this perfectly legal when government uh, awards leases and contracts like this it's obviously favorable to the vendor in question okay uh, so far everything's on the up and up right but he still had he still had some plans he's still kind of licking his chops he's sitting in the back waiting for all this to kind of go down right 
what wasn't legal, where, where he flipped over to the complete other side of illegality, right, was that it was discovered that he personally received what was called, what, what he referred to, or what went down in history as a quote-unquote no-interest loan of $100,000 and other gifts that followed, totaling over $400,000 thereafter for the uh, uh, this lease to be awarded. Now, in, in today's day and money, that may not seem like a whole lot of money, folks, from the 1920s perspective of things, or even today's perspective of things, okay? But in the 1920s, this amounted to two to six million dollars. That was the equivalent, okay? Something's going on, obviously. You remember uh, all the president's men, right? The Watergate scandal, Woodward and Bernstein, follow the money. Deep Throat, follow the money, follow the money. Every anytime a huge amount of money like that drops, uh, something's going on, right? Big, huge red flag. Fall made things really easy for everybody, quite frankly. And their suspicions, he proceeded to experience a very noticeable uptick in affluence and in standard of living. Duh. Could put your money away, bro, if you're gonna if you're gonna take that kind of money. I mean, you know, you just don't flaunt it. And that's apparently what he did. After a lengthy Senate investigation, of course, because you know the Senate got involved, Fall would be convicted of accepting bribes from the oil companies in nineteen twenty nine and leases would also be eventually subsequent basis and validated by the Supreme Court when all was finally said and done. Fall would go down in history as the first presidential cabinet member in history to go to prison. And he did, in fact, do some time for this. Teapot Dome, a couple of geek factoids about the whole Teapot Dome scandal. Um, it, it's hard to put it in perspective in 2022 in your history, history, high school history class, right? But Teapot Dome, think of it this way is regarded as the greatest and most sensational scandal in the history of American politics at the time. Many historians, and rightly so, refer to it as the Watergate of the 1920s. It was a big, big, huge deal. Big, huge scandal, right? This is pre-Iran-Contra, pre-Watergate, pre-whatever, all that stuff that Donald Trump did, all that good stuff. This, this was a big, huge deal. In the, 19, in the corrupt, roaring 20s, right? Because of the Teapot Dome scandal, Congress subsequently passed legislation in, that endures to this day, still in the books, giving subpoena power to the House and Senate for review of tax records of any U.S. citizen, regardless of elected or appointed position. And you may have heard of their power to do that. That originated with the Teapot Dome scandal. Okay, these resulting laws are also considered to have empowered the role of Congress more generally. So a lot of power was given to uh, Congress when this when they uh, the Senate investigated the Teapot Dome scandal, and all this came to be. Roaring twenties, there you go, Teapot Dome. All right, folks, brand new trivia question for Hump Day. Get you over that hunt for October twenty sixth. Remember, this is two part. We're gonna have two. Trivia questions tonight on this day in 1984. Here we go. See if you can guess who this artist is. A 19-year-old named John McCollum was tragically found shot to death in his home in California. It was quickly determined that the fatal wound was unfortunately self-inflicted and the parents would go on to sue this musician, claiming that the lyrics to one of his songs was a proximate cause for their son's death. Good luck, folks. Have a happy hump day. I'll see you in just a little bit with part two of our trivia questions. Peace out.